नमस्कार एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर दीप्ति वारिको डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी डॉल्फिन पी जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ बायोमेडिकल एंड नेचुरल साइंसेस कंटिन्यूइंग विद आर चेस्ट क्लियरेंस टुडेज टॉपिक इज कफिंग सो कफिंग इज अ प्रोटेक्टिव रिफ्लेक्स व्हिच रिड्स द एयरवेज ऑफ सीक्रेशंस और फॉरेन बॉडीज एनी स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ रिसेप्टर्स लोकेटेड इन पैरनेक्स लैरनेक्स ट्रेकिया और द ब्रोंकाई मे इंड्यूस कफ an effective cough is necessary to eliminate the obstructions and keep the lungs clear important features concerning cough are first its effectiveness and then whether it is a productive cough or a dry cough airway clearance is very important part of the management of patients with acute or chronic respiratory conditions before going into the normal cough pump let us see what are the different types of coughs there could be a loud barking cough which is often termed bovine it signifies laryngeal or tracheal disease a recurrent coughing after eating or drinking is because of aspirations a chronic productive cough which is mainly seen daily can could be due to bronchitis bronchiectasis interstitial lung disease is characterized by persistent dry cough drugs especially beta blockers and some other drugs can cause a chronic cough nocturnal cough is an important symptom of asthma in children and young adults and in older patients it is due to cardiac failure now when we cough we produce something called as sputum in normal adults approximately 100 ml of tracheobronchial secretions are produced daily that is the sputum if it is excess the tracheobronchial secretions that is cleared from the airways by coughing or huffing it may contain mucus cellular debris sometimes microorganisms sometimes blood or some foreign particles now we have to assess the sputum to identify the cough first we have to determine the color consistency and quantity of the sputum we can also grade sputum whether it is m1 mucoid with no suspicion of pus m2 predominantly mucoid suspicion of pus or p1 that is 1/3 purulent 2/3 mucoid p2 2/3 purulent 1/3 mucoid or p3 where we see that there is more purulence now what is a normal cough pump as we all know the cough may be reflexive or voluntary when a person coughs a series of actions occur we will see that in later of this uh, slide show under normal conditions the cough pump is effective to seventh generation of bronchi we all know there are total 23 generations of bronchi in the tracheobronchial tree ciliated epithelial cells are present up to terminal bronchi and raise secretions from the smaller to the larger airways in the absence of any kind of pathology so what is the proper cough mechanism so these are the things which occur first in du- uh, during the effective cough me- uh, mechanism what we do first is a deep inspiration then the glottis closes and our vocal cord tighten then the abdominal muscles contract and the diaphragm elevates causing an increased intrathoracic and intraabdominal pressure which opens the glottis and there is explosive expir- expiration of the air this is the generalized cough mechanism there is positioning and patient instructions which can improve the cough effectiveness of the cough first we have to make sure that position of the patient for the success especially in regarding the trunk alignment then maximize inspiratory phase through verbal cues and active arm movements then improve the hold stage through verbal cues maximize the intrathoracic and intraabdominal pressure with muscle contractions and the trunk movements instruct the patient in appropriate timing and trunk movements for expulsion make the procedure physically active on patient's part it is very important more patient is actively performing the mechanism more effective it is now what are the factors which decrease the effectiveness of cough pump it is very important because we have to make sure that these factors are considered properly 
फर्स्ट फैक्टर इज डिक्रीज इन स्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी इंस्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी कैन बी रिड्यूस्ड बिकॉज ऑफ पेन ड्यू टू अक्यूट लंग डिजीज रिब फ्रैक्चर्स ट्रॉमा टू चेस्ट और रिसेंट थोरेसिक और एब्डोमिनल सर्जरीज वीकनेस ऑफ द डायफ्रम और एक्सेसरी मसल्स ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ हाई स्पाइनल कॉर्ड इंजरी और न्यूरोपैथिक और मायोपैथिक डिजीज डिक्रीजेज अ पेशेंट्स एबिलिटी टू टेक अ डीप ब्रेथ पोस्ट ऑपरेटिवली द रेस्पिरेटरी सेंटर मे बी डिप्रेस्ड एज द रिजल्ट ऑफ जनरल एनेस्थेसिया पेन और मेडिकेशन दैट मे ऑल्सो डिक्रीज द इंस्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी द सेकेंड पॉइंट द सेकेंड फैक्टर मे बी इनेबिलिटी टू फोर्सफुली एक्सपेल द एयर अ स्पाइनल कॉड इंजरी अबाउट टी ट्वेल्व एंड मायोपैथिक डिजीज सच एज मस्क्यूलर डिस्ट्रोफी कैन कॉज वीकनेस ऑफ एबडोमिनल मसल्स विच आर वाइटल फॉर स्ट्रॉन्ग कफ excessive fatigue as the result of a critical illness and a chest wall or abdominal incision causing pain all can contribute to a weak cough that we have to make sure a patient who has a uh, pain a patient who had an uh, tracheostomy also faces difficulty for such things the third point could be decreased action of the cilia in the bronchial tree action of the ciliated cells may be compromised because of physical interventions such as general anesthesia and intubation or pathology such as copd which includes bronchitis mainly which is associated with a disease uh, decreased number of cilia, uh, ciliated epithelial cells in the airway sometimes we uh, do associate smoking with such decreased action of cilia in the bronchial tract The fourth point is increase in the amount or thickness of the mucus. Pathologies such as cystic fibrosis, chronic bronchitis, and pulmonary infections like pneumonia mainly are associated with an increase in mucus production and the thickness of the uh, mucus. Intubation uh, sometimes uh, may irritate the lumen of the airways and cause increased mucus production, whereas dehydration thickens the mucus. This is very important. We should. know about all this now how to teach an effective cough to our patient because an effective cough is an integral component of airway clearance a patient must be taught the importance of an effective cough how to produce an efficient and uh, controlled voluntary cough and when to cough it is very important for that first assess the patient's voluntary or reflexive cough and then have the patient assume a relaxed comfortable position which is very important for deep breathing and coughing sitting or leaning forward usually is the best position of the coughing the patient's neck should be slightly flexed to make coughing more comfortable teach the patient controlled diaphragmatic breathing which we have uh, been teaching in last sessions of our classes emphasize deep inspirations demonstrate a sharp deep double cough demonstrate the proper muscle action of coughing that is contraction of the abdom abdominals it is very important uh, patient has to contract the abdominals have the patient place the hand on the abdominals and make three huffs with expiration to feel the contractions of the abdominals patient can also uh, practice making a k sound to experience tightening of the vocal cords closing the glottis and contracting the abdominals when the patient has these actions together taught and he does it very properly uh we can see that he is able to take a deep but relaxed inspiration which fo followed by a sharp double cough the second cough during a single expiration is usually more productive use an abdominal binder or glossopharyngeal breathing in selected patients with inspiratory or abdominal muscle weakness to enhance the cough that is if necessary we have to make sure this now we have to take some precautions for teaching an effective cough first never allow a patient to gasp in air because this increases the work of breathing causing the patient to feel fatigue more easily avoid uncontrolled cough mechanisms it is very important because uh, such type of uh, para, uh, paroxysmal coughing can also be very difficult for the patient avoid forceful coughing if a patient has a history of a cerebrovascular accident or an aneurysm be sure that the patient coughs while in a somewhat erect or side lying position now 
let us see some additional techniques which we use as physiotherapists to facilitate a cough and improve airway clearance assisted cough techniques which are mainly used are costophrenic assist it's ma mainly the manual techniques in which hands are used to assist the coughing first is the costophrenic technique second is the abdominal thrust technique third is the anterior chest compression fourth is counter rotation these are the manual techniques then we have self assisted techniques like prone on elbows with head flexion and assisting the cough long sitting self assisted coughs short sitting self assisted coughs hand knee rocking self assisted coughs standing self assisted coughs the, these coughs these techniques are used to assist the patient for better cough and effective cough you can see the first where we are using the costophrenic assist the patient is placing his hand on the costophrenic angles then on the navel the abdominal thrust then you can see these are the assistive cough techniques in supine positions the placement of hand is the variations for the assist then you can see the counter rotation assist and the self assist like prone on el elbows now first let us see about the manual assisted coughs if a patient has abdominal weakness like the abdominals are weak uh that could be as a result of mid thoracic or cervical cord injuries manual pressure uh, pressure on the abdominal area assists in developing greater intra abdominal pressure for a more forceful cough manual pressure for coughing assistance can be applied by the therapist or by the patient himself see here is the technique where we are giving a manual assistance then the therapist assisted techniques with the patient in supine semicircle position the therapist places the heel of one hand on patient's abdomen as the epigastric area just distal to the xiphoid process the other hand is placed on the top of the first keeping the fingers open or interlocking them after the patient inhales as deeply as possible the therapist manually assists the patient as he or she attempts to cough the abdominal abdomen is compressed with an inward and outward force with, which pushes the diaphragm upward to cause a more forceful and effective cough can like here you can see the same maneuver can be performed with the patient in a chair the therapist or family member can stand in the back of the patient and apply the manual pressure during the expiration we have to uh, make sure some precautions are taken care avoid direct pressure on xiphoid process during this maneuver it is very important the abdominal has to be compressed properly then we have a self assisted techniques while in sitting position the patient crosses the arms across the abdomen or places the interlocking hands below the xiphoid process after a deep inspiration the patient pushes inward and upward on the abdomen with the wrist or forearms and simultaneously leans forward while attempting to cough we can use splinting in it if the chest will uh, wall pain from recent surgery or trauma is restricting the cough teach the patient to splint over the painful area during coughing have the patient press the hands or you can take a pillow over the incision to support the painful area while the patient coughs if the patient cannot reach the painful area the therapist should assist at that time humidification is also used uh, for a good and productive coughs if the secretions are very thick work with the patient after humidification therapy or ultrasonic nebulizer therapy both of uh, which enhance the mucociliary transport system and facilitate a good and productive cough then tracheal stimulation it is mainly used for uh, uh, pediatric patients tracheal stimulation sometimes called as tracheal tickle may be used with infants or disoriented patients who cannot cooperate during the treatment tracheal stimulation is somewhat uncomfortable maneuver but it elicits a reflexive cough the therapist places two fingers at the sternal notch and applies a circular motion with pressure downwards into the trachea to facilitate a reflexive cough the index finger and ring finger 
are placed on the uh, re respective sternal notches while the middle finger is used to stimulate the trachea. These were the techniques which are mainly used to induce coughing and have a productive cough. We have to make sure individuals who are taught cough are first the, are first taught to do it in front of you and you supervise it. Once the patient is able to perform it properly, then he can do it at their homes also. I hope you understood the lecture. If there are any queries, they all are welcome. You can contact me. Thank you so much. Have a great day.